Hey everyone, I am Jason and today we are going to talk about recursion. Recursion in programming is essentially when a function calls itself um, in order to solve a problem. And this may seem a little complicated at first, but it's definitely worth the time um, in order to figure out and really understand this concept. Um, so an analogy I really like to uh, think about when thinking about recursion is um, the process of finding a name in a phone book. So let's say you're looking for the name Gonzalez, right? That's my last name. Um, what you would do is you would open to the first page of the phone book and um, you would look through the current page and if it's not there you would turn the page and you will repeat that two-step process over and over and over again or you would repeat that two-step process recursively, right? Um, so if it's not on the first page then you look through that page and then you turn the page. And if it's not on that one, you turn the page and if it's not on the next one you turn the page until you find the name itself and that name itself is the base case and the base case is really important because you're working towards the base case um, and essentially you're moving towards the base case every time you turn the page right and um, but the other base case is also if you find the name and the base case allows you to break away from the recursive calls of the function itself um, so either you find the name or you run out of pages to turn right and um, yeah, I think it's really interesting to think about the base case because you're almost reducing the size of the problem itself, right? Initially, you have all these pages, but every time you turn one page, you make the size of the problem one page smaller and one page smaller. And then um, that's how you reduce the complexity of the, um, of the problem itself. And yeah, in order to really highlight the power of recursion and how useful it is in programming, I wanted to write up some code here um, for you all. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is um, I'm actually going to declare um, my function. Um, I'm going to call it your ages, and then it's going to intake an integer, and we're going to call this integer uh, counter. And the counter is just going to be your the counter of where your age is, right? Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do in main is I'm going to create an integer and I'm going to call that x. Um, that's my variable x now. And then I'm going to ask the user, see out, how old are you? Right? How old are you? And then I'm going to end that there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to store whatever, whatever they input and I'm going to store that in the variable we created called x. And then I'm going to call the function your ages, which we declared just now. And the counter, that, my counter is actually going to be the x that they provide. So the age that they provide, right? Um, and yeah. So now I'm going to define the function. Um, so I'm going to define your ages, and this is going to be again, an integer called counter. Right. And then this is where the logic lies. If the counter is less than um, zero, then that's when I'm going to, going to stop. So that's pretty much my base case, right? When your age is, there's no such thing as an age that is less than zero. Right, so that's my base case, and I'm going to break out for return from the the function. But for the meantime, uh, most of the time the counter is not going to be under zero or less than zero. It's actually going to be over that. So I'm going to say else. Um, I'm going to see out you were once. counter years old. And there we are. I'm going to end that um, there. So as you can see, you're going to um, say you were once counter years old. Um, but this is where the recursion lies, right? Once I call my function again, um, I'm actually going to put the reduce the counter by one, 
So every time that the recursion is called, you're actually moving down the counter from one. So I'm going to end up there. So here's where the recursion line. Inside the function, your ages, you call the function your ages. But this time, when you call your ages, you move, you move the counter down one, right? So essentially, if you provide um, the user with an input of, let's say, 14, when it asks you how old you are, you're actually going to go through the function, and it's going to say, you were once 14 years old. And then it's going to move on to the next one by calling the function again, your ages, but this time it's going to go to 13 because the counter is going to go from 14 to 13. Um, and it's going to repeat this process all the way until the counter is... Um, less than zero, right? So let's actually run this. Hopefully um, it works pretty well. How old are you? Let's say 14. Enter. You were once 14 years old. You were once 13, 12, 11, 10, um, all the way down to zero. Um, and one thing to note is that um, once the counter is negative one, it actually still goes through this function, but however, um, it actually breaks out of the function right here with the return um, because this is what happens when the counter is less than zero, right? So obviously you don't see the, the last initial part here. Um, because once it's negative, um, once the counter is negative one, it does not go through this process here. And yeah, that's the power of recursion. You see, um, it's actually helping me um, show exactly what ages you have been um, throughout your lifetime. And yeah, that's the power of recursion. I hope you enjoy this. I've been Jason.